but I want to today focus more on how we need to renew our minds towards the things pertaining to the kingdom of God or what we would call kingdom doctrine. Okay. Um, as you're well aware of, we, most of us, many of us have been indoctrinated in religion, traditions, the traditions of men. And you've heard me say before that within Christianity alone, this does not include the other religions that are out there. There are many religions out there um, that have in some ways cross-pollinated and infused their doctrine or their beliefs into other religions. For example, um, within Christianity, um, we have, there's been an infusion <clears throat> of what is referred to by many as the Kundalini spirit, which another word is the false Holy Spirit or the false Holy Ghost. Some people use that. And, and that comes from the, the Pacific Rim or uh, India and so on. And we've engaged in things within the church that are esoteric. Um, my word is uh, sometimes spooky or sensationalism, um, but they're based on other religions. Okay. Um, I've seen situations, there's videos out there and I'm not going to go into all the videos out there, but there's people that slither on the floor in church services saying that the Holy spirit has come into that church or there's a move of the Holy spirit and they slither on the phone, excuse me, on the phone. They slither on the floor like snakes. I've seen people <clears throat> shake can, you know, can convulse, um, in meetings. And, you know, I don't mean to be dramatic about it, but kind of like, you know, just little, 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 you know, shaking and just acting up. And that, when you study through a lot of that comes from, like I said, uh, other religions in this case, Hinduism and others, and I'm not knocking any other religion. Um, that that's not the intent. The intent is to explain that, we, we're not to be involved in those things, okay? And these things have crept into the church. And the reason we embrace things like that is because we're, um, uh, we're not kingdom literate. We're religious literate, or we're Baptist literate, or we're Church of God, we're Church of God in Christ literate. We, we understand those things. We understand who the founder of our particular denomination is we can recite in many cases bylaws and so on rules um, our our statement of faith our, what we believe as a church and that stuff we have to we have to move away from and the way we move away from that is we need to renew our minds okay and we need to renew our mind to the kingdom of God or what we refer to as kingdom principles kingdom laws kingdom concepts kingdom ways which is the word of God. But you have to be taught and you have to learn of the kingdom of God because somebody could take one scripture and we'll talk about this today. I'll prove it to you. Um, take one scripture and it's, it fits their, their doctrine. It fits the doctrines of demons or doctrines of men and traditions of men and denominations, etc. what they believe it says. But there's only one truth. There's not multiple truths. OK, there is one truth, and that is the kingdom of heaven. OK, again, original intent is what we've been talking about. So we need to renew our minds or, or our mind to the kingdom of God. Now, go to Matthew chapter six. We're going to hit, hit some scriptures here. Matthew chapter six and verse number 31. We've gone through this before. We'll go through it really quick again. And in Matthew six and 31, uh, Jesus says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles are those who are out of, out of covenant or don't have covenant with God, uh, the heathen, the pagans. Um, that's what they seek. They, that's what they seek. Excuse me. And we could say this way, that that's what the world seeks after. That's what the demonic system of the world, the world is a demonic system. Okay, I'm not talking about the people of the world. I'm talking about the system of the world. 
that's what that system seeks after. And if people are engaged in that, okay, um, they're connected with that and that's where they're getting fed, then they're going to do, even if they're a believer, what the Gentiles do or the pagans do and worry about, you know, what's the future? What's, what, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen there? You know, and so on. And Jesus says, don't do that. Um, for your heavenly father, he knows obviously what you, that you have a need of these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be added to you. So when we're talking about renewing our mind to the kingdom of God. You can't renew it to the kingdom if you're not seeking after the kingdom. R remember, you will always find that which you seek after. When people say, I don't know how, I know that it's because they're not seeking after. If somebody says, I can't do, that's because you're not, they're not seeking after. If you seek, the Bible's very clear. If you seek, you shall find. Not sometimes, all the time. So when people say, well, I don't understand the kingdom, you're not, that means you're not seeking the kingdom. So we have to have a disposition about ourselves that says, you know what, today I am seeking after the kingdom of God, which means now you have to put down some other things, okay? Those are the things pertaining to the world system or the world's way of doing things. So for example, if you're worrying, uh, you know, Jesus says, all right, uh, 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 do not worry, saying, well, worry, that word worry means don't, don't be troubled. Don't be anxious. Don't have anxiety or, or care for. Um, some versions say don't take thought. In other words, don't consistently, religiously, um, you know, throughout the day, think about, okay? Um, this word also means don't seek to promote your own interests. And this is big. This is really big, especially today in, in, in our day and age, you know, with the internet and social media and news platforms and, you know, good news, not so good news, fake news, whatever you, term you want to put to it. Okay. That's that the media at large is the world's system. Okay. And if we get in, in caught up in it and, you know, I think there was a time maybe in all of our lives, I can say in, in the name of transparency that there have been times that I've gravitated to getting media information and, and so on. And at the end of the day, I don't care what your belief is on world events and all this other stuff. It, it, it really turned out to be somewhat futile. Uh, there, there's no value in it. Okay, all it does is create anxiety, trouble, fear, et cetera. And again, I can talk about a lot of different issues. I'm not going to do that because I don't see any value in doing that. Um, however, we we have to put that down. So I have been news free for probably now, what are we in October? So maybe six to eight months. I can't recall which. I know it was early on in the year where I just got rid of uh, news feeds. OK, now I do have some things that come on, but it's mostly like, things that I'm interested in, like health related stuff or, you know, kingdom stuff or success and prosperity and peace and all that stuff. OK, and, and that's fine. But I don't get all the junk. And I'm telling you, I feel great. People say, well, aren't you concerned about this? Again, what does it say here? Don't take thought about that. Don't be troubled. Don't be have anxiety. Don't, don't promote what you want, Robert, okay, or replace your name in there. Well, I just believe, yeah, and then you start promoting that. That's not what we're here for. We're here to promote the kingdom of God. So we need to stop listening. We need to stop Googling, uh, following things that do not pertain to the kingdom of God. Because what you're doing is, through repetition, your mind is becoming renewed to those things, whatever those things are that you may be involved in. So uh, stop following non-kingdom messages. If you're following a leader and, and the message that that leader is preaching or teaching has nothing to do with the kingdom, you need to stop listening to them. I'm not saying they're a bad person. I'm not going into that. I'm not saying they're not anointed. I'm not saying anything about them. What I'm saying is, is that we need to follow kingdom messages. We need to connect with the kingdom culture, kingdom people, 
like-minded individuals. It does not mean that we cannot have conversations with other people, specifically unbelievers or religious personnel that, that's out there. Because how are they going to learn about the kingdom if we don't talk to them? However, I'm talking about rubbing shoulders, rubbing elbows, you know, connecting to, fellowshipping with, et cetera. You know, having your daily conversation with, if, if, if you talk to people who are into all this other stuff, it's going to infect you, okay? It's going to infect you. So stick with what you know you need, and that is the kingdom of God. Now, I'm not saying have your head in the sand. I'm not saying don't be aware of, of your surroundings. I'm not saying don't be aware of things that are going on. You should, you, you should not uh, be oblivious to some things. Well, actually, in some cases, you should be oblivious, okay? And I can go into that at some other point. But um, you need to focus in on what's first, and that is the kingdom of God, okay? Um, and you need to seek after that. That means the desire. So you have to really check yourself and say, am I really desiring the kingdom? Or do I desire, I think, think about it this way. Some of you who have come out from traditional church, maybe you left the local church, et cetera. Um, I have this happen all the time as I talk to people. They come out for whatever the reason, okay? And then they're kind of in a, in a place of, I don't know, maybe despair or loneliness or confusion or whatever, because they're out of that comfort zone that they were in. They were in a system where every Sunday you go, you get your praise on, you get your worship on, you do this, you do that. You have that culture of religious church. Now they're out of that. And they're like, okay, now what do I do? That, that, that's why I'm, that's what I'm saying. You need to first off, seek the kingdom of God. In other words, the goal wasn't that which you were in. Never go back to that place of familiarity, okay? What you have to do is you have to renew the mind. The mind has been conditioned to do what, what is traditionally or has been traditionally done and is traditionally done in churches everywhere, okay? So people say, well, I, need to, I just really miss praise and worship. I hear that all the time. And that's really telling me that you don't know what praise and worship is. You're equating what you were doing to that's praise and worship. And that indeed was a form of the praise and worship. But we have to know what worship, true worship is. Remember, Jesus said, the time is coming. He said this 2,000 years ago. The time is coming, and now is. That means 2,000 years ago, it now was and, not, and still is. That the true worshipers would worship in spirit and truth. What does that look like? So we have to understand that, okay? We have to understand true worship from a kingdom dynamic. Seek after the kingdom, that should be, you know, that word seek, by the way, means to worship, okay? Seek first the kingdom, that means worship the kingdom. See, whatever you're seeking after, write this one down, whatever you're seeking after is what you're worshiping. That's a powerful statement right there. Whatever you find yourself seeking after is that which you're worshiping. Now, you can seek after multiple things. Remember, it says seek first the kingdom. So it doesn't mean you can't seek other things. As long as those things come under the dynamics of the kingdom of God, okay? When we seek, when we desire the kingdom, everything is added. What do you need? It's added to you if you seek the kingdom. That's very clear here. Most of our problems today, whatever they are, are going to go back to the fact that we do not understand original intent in the kingdom of God within us. OK, that's why we're here. That's why I'm teaching you the way I'm teaching you. OK. All right. Now, I want to, as we're talking about renewing your mind or our mind to the kingdom of God, um, go over, go over to Matthew 23. I want to show you some things today. OK. And while you're turning over to Matthew chapter number 23, um, I'm going to take a peek here. Uh, Okay, good, good, good. Those things go into our subconscious mind and will create a stronghold if we do not reject the garbage. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so Matthew chapter, let me get there myself, Matthew chapter 23. And let's look at verse number 13. Now, this is where you need to really pay some attention. Okay. Um, Matthew 23 and 24 go together. OK, 
Okay, there's no breaks. I know we have chapter and verse. But in this 23 and 24, this is all crunched together. This is all basically one day, okay, or one moment where Jesus is talking, Jesus is teaching, and he's going to go from Matthew 23 to Matthew 24. And in Matthew 23 and verse number 13, I want you to focus in on this. Again, we're talking about renewing our mind to the kingdom of God. Jesus says this. And, and by the way, this is, this is, these are the woes to the religious leaders of that day, the scribes and the Pharisees, okay, the, the Sadducees, uh, the, the, the legalistics, the lawyers, the, you know, the, the scribe, all that. Jesus is pronouncing judgment here. And he goes into a lot of different woes. And he says in, excuse me, verse number 13, he says, but woe to you, scribes, and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. So what this is saying in, in, in everyday language, okay, let me break it down to you, that religion, Jesus is saying religion, religious leaders, and, and personnel, Okay, those involved in this, they shut up the kingdom of God against men or men's faces. So when men want to come in to the kingdom, religion, religious leaders, religious personnel, religious systems, traditions of men shut that up. So that's why I was saying earlier, you can't. And by the way, and I, I, I said this years ago when I was teaching, I said, don't think of religion or religious as only things like Christianity or Hinduism or Buddhism or, you know, what, what we may refer to as the church or Rome or, you know, Catholicism. What, don't, don't think of that only as religion. You could, there are many religions. There's new religions created every day and you can do something religiously. Okay. So you've heard the term, you know, I religiously go to the gym. Okay, so again, there are people that worship the gym. There are people that worship the library. There's worship, there's people that worship higher education and they're just, you know, constantly going and getting degrees, whatever. Okay, we need to have balance there, of course. But but again, that which you are focused in on, that which you're seeking is what you're worshiping. And, and I'm saying this because we have a problem today. And I see it. You know, and I click on every once in a while and I see like, you know, what is it? Christian news networks and all this stuff. And they're talking about things, world events, you know, a tsunami, a, 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 an election, a disease of this, that, and the other. And it's like, you're not talking about the kingdom of God. You're talking about circumstances. You're talking about environment and you, and you sound defeated. I mean, now, yeah, you may try to say, well, we have the victory in Jesus' name. Okay, that sounds good, but your entire 45 minutes leading up to that was all about the world and, and everything going on there. Why are we talking about this stuff? Why? Tell me, has it changed your life? Has it radically renewed your, 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 your world to, to better? Are you walking in peace? prosperity, joy, health, increase, wisdom, knowledge, anointing, giftings, again, wholeness. Is, are, is your life gotten better? Or are you, like Jesus said, worrying and anxiety, whatever? Stop. Stop it. You can't, you can't focus in on the kingdom of God when you're all involved in that. Jesus was never involved. Listen very clearly. Jesus was never involved in what Rome was doing. He really did not care what Rome was doing. Okay? He paid his taxes. He, he, he played by the rules, as it were, from a governmental standpoint of the world. But he was, not, he, he was not interested in changing Rome. He did not care about that. And you don't find any apostles doing that either. They were not trying to change Rome. OK, what they were doing is they were preaching the good news of the kingdom of God to people that people would enter in the kingdom. Religion and all these other 
movements, according to what we're seeing here, shut up the kingdom of God against men. That word shut up means to obstruct. It, it becomes an obstacle. And in the Old Testament, when you see the word obstacle or opposition, that word in the Old Testament is Satan. Satan. Satan is that which opposes or the obstacle. This is why Jesus turned to Peter, a man, and said, get behind me, Satan. He called Peter a real human being. He called Peter Satan. Why? Because Peter was not mindful of God's original intention, what God's plans and purposes are. And when we're focused in on all these different movements that are out there, whatever they may be, and I can name a, a lot of them, there's no value in doing that. I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on getting people to renew their mind towards the kingdom of God, okay? Because the only way things out there in the world are going to change is we're going to have to get the message of the kingdom to the hearts of men. And, and I've said this for oh, now 40 years, one heart at a time. You get one person kingdomized in their mind, in their thinking, in their beliefs, they're going to go, That's this is the Jesus model of discipleship. They're going to go and teach, which is what we've been told to do. Go and teach or disciple all nations. In what? The things I've told you. What did Jesus talk to his disciples about? The kingdom. He didn't talk to them about Rome. He didn't, he didn't talk to them about, now Caesar, you know, he's really messing up. He did no, 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 no. He didn't get into all that stuff. Sometimes he would refer to, like the, the high priest in Israel, he referred to them, he refer, and, 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 and Herod and others as foxes and all this other stuff, snakes. And here he tells the, calls the religious leaders, okay, serpents and scorpions and snakes and vipers and, you know, gives them a bunch of woes. So stay away from these things because they will shut the kingdom of God or be an obstruction to you receiving the things pertaining to the kingdom, okay? This is basically saying that it keeps people from the kingdom of God. Now, I hope you understand what I just said, okay? And if you have any questions, we can deal with that a, a little bit later. I want to move forward, though, because I really want you to see the picture here. So this entire chapter, and we'll go through this at some time, it, it would take me a few days or a few sessions to go to scrub this entire chapter 23. But you can see that Jesus is saying, look, that system shuts up the kingdom of God. So you're not going to enter in the kingdom of God through that system. That system, by the way, was known as the temple system. They were going to enter the kingdom of God like that. Okay. Now, Go over to flip the, the chapter. I want to take you on this journey here. Look at Matthew 24 and, and 14, because again, we're talking about renewing our mind to the kingdom of God. And I want to prove how somebody could take a scripture and it could either be kingdom or it could be religious. Okay. So in Matthew chapter 24, in verse number 14, very, very familiar scripture to many. You've probably quoted it or had it quoted to you. And, and, and watch, watch this down. It says um, in 14, and this is Jesus talking, and this gospel of the kingdom, so this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now, I want to give some of you an opportunity to share with me for just a moment, nothing long, to you, what has this, how, how has this been explained to you? What, is, what does it mean? What is the scripture, this verse, that this gospel kingdom will be preached to all the world and then the end will come? Somebody come off mute and, and talk to me here. When I hey, heard Robert, this, this is Cindy and Scott. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know if anybody's talking. Can you hear me? 
Can you hear There's me? Nobody. Oh, Lewis, hold on. Why, do, yeah. why can I not hear you? <laughs> there. Can you hear me Lewis, now? I okay. can't hear. <clears throat> okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, Give it a try, Lewis. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Right. So I would have to say when I when I hear the, when I hear the scripture from past experiences, I think the the main thing that would stick out to me would be you know we need to preach the gospel because the end of the world or end of time would come. Okay. So that would stick with me in my mind, the end of the world okay. or time. So good. That's okay. what that that's that's what it meant to me. Okay. Go ahead, Dee. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, Lewis end of that age and not the world itself. Okay. All right. But Tasha, you, you know, you've been under our teaching for a long time. So. <laughs> okay. Listen. But good, that, that's good. And that's what it means to you. Okay. So let's go with those two. Okay. Lewis says, and I think Lewis probably represents the majority of people that, you know, that now I'm not saying that's his belief today, but that's what he heard. That's what he was taught. And I can say I was taught that as well. I'm certain, Tasha, you could say that at one time, maybe you were taught that as well. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that that once we preach the kingdom of God, okay, to the whole world, then the end will come. And that would be the end of, of the world, okay? Boosh! And of course, then we start getting visions of the rapture, the second coming, Jesus taking us out of here, the millennial reign. Then we get Jesus coming back and then we rule and reign with him. And, you know, you get all those images. OK, but that scripture right there, if it's taught from a place of, yep, we need to preach the kingdom. Now they kind of extract the kingdom and say, we just need to go and preach to every human being everywhere. We need to be all over the planet and, 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 and evangelize and uh, be missionaries to all over the place. And once we hit everybody, that's it. Jesus is coming and on a cloud and, 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 you know, we get those images, but this has been wrongly interpreted by most. Okay. When it, when it talks about the gospel of the kingdom being preached to all the world. Okay. Uh, put yourself on mute, uh, Will be. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, that's okay. So, so you, ha you have to understand that which that world, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout all the world. That, that word for world is speaking of, of the, the region. So, and at that time, the world was known and not as, you know, what we know the world to be today. Okay. They were saying that within their world, you have a world, I have a world. Okay. That within their world, that region, that the gospel of the kingdom would be preached. And we know that according to, and just jot this down, and somebody can put it in the chat box, okay, for you, you students here, that in Romans chapter 10, okay, verse 18, that it says that their voice, it says, has not their voice, talking about the apostles, the first century church, has not their voice gone out throughout all the earth? Now, again, did their voice go out through all the earth in 2,000 years ago? The earth is a big place. What it was referring to is that that region was saturated with the gospel, the good news, the message of the kingdom of God. So in Matthew 24, and, and I'm going to show you something. This is going to be really good if you can grab this thing today. In Matthew uh, uh, 24 and 14... OK, it's saying to that generation that the gospel of the kingdom would be preached in that region. And then then what does it say? It says, then the end will come. Now we have to say end of what? Here we go. If you're going to understand the kingdom, you have to understand the end of what? OK, now we need to understand that the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom would come at the end. 
The disciples knew this. I will take you on this journey. And in, in one of the one of the places we'll look at is Matthew 13, not right now, but you'll get an understanding that the di disciples were not confused. Okay. They understood what Jesus was talking. Now we 2000 years removed, like Lewis said, we think, Oh, let's get out there, do this, do that. Then Jesus will come. They knew it to them that if we do that, then Jesus will come. But their understanding of what it means to come is different than ours today. Okay. Now let, let's go back to, to stay in 24, but let's go back to verse one. Now, I want you to see something here. When, when Jesus is talking about the woes to the scribes, Pharisees, religious leaders, and he's pronouncing judgment. Actually, let's, let's, let's look at this. I want to show you this. Uh, stay, go to Matthew 23, okay? And in verse number 38, Jesus concludes his judgment upon Israel. And he says this to them. Now, remember, he's, he's talking to, to his disciples here. And he says, see, now, of course, the religious leaders are there. They're hearing him as well. Okay. But he says, see your house. Oh, man, I just got <laughs> goosebumps there. Your house. Man, that's powerful. Because I can see the dominion here. I can, I can, I can feel the thrust in Jesus' voice. In the authority, because he's speaking kingdom words, kingdom dynamic, kingdom truth. And he says, see, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you're not going to see, he's talking about the temple, okay, the religious leader said, you're not going to see me any longer till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then we know that's when he went to Jerusalem and they cried, Hosanna and put down palms and et cetera. And the king, as Jesus, the king entered into the holy city at that time, okay? So he says, your house is made to you desolate. Now, this word desolate is big, and it would alarm, it would be very troubling to them in that day to hear our house, our temple. Now, now you guys have seen Solomon's temple, you know, all the different temples and, and so on. They were big, they were massive, they were strong, they were amazing, et cetera, et cetera. Different chambers, high walls, and they thought it was a tremendously fortified place. Jesus is saying, your house, okay? Now, he didn't say my father's house. He said, your house, because that's what religion, oh, that's what religion does. It builds its house. He says, your house, because they perverted everything of God, your house has made you desolate. That means it's, 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 it's becoming, it's a lonely place. It's a place now of wilderness. It really gives the image of a husband that has left his wife desolate to fend for herself. She's on her own. I'm gone. It, it's that, it's that basically like a divorce of the husband or, or, the, or the, 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 yeah, the husband to the wife. Okay. And, and that's, that would be tremendously alarming to them. Okay, now watch this because it's going to get really good. He goes on immediately. Remember, don't think 23 and 24 like there's some separation. This is some later day, whatever. No, he now it says, then watch this. Then uh, Jesus went out and departed from the temple. That's where he was. And his disciples came up to him because they were hearing him. There was a crowd there when he was talking. He's saying, your house has left you desolate. Woe to you, scribes, and so on. Okay. His disciples walked home, up to him, and it says, and they showed him the buildings of the temple. Again, massive, just the massive. Jesus says to them, watch what Jesus says. Jesus says that to them, do you? Now stop. Let's not go too fast. Who's Jesus talking to? Somebody, is he talking to you? Was he talking to them? Talk to me. Ben. Ben. Right. He said, okay, that's called audience relevance. The audience is there. And he's saying, do you not see these things? So he's questioning them. He says, surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that will not 
be thrown down. So what he's saying is, look, and then says, and now, uh, as he said at the Mount of Olives, and, and we'll go on in that in a second. So what he's saying is this. He's saying, look, that system, that building that you, you know, and, and he's on the Mount of Olives. So if you know anything about that area, the, the, the temple was like kind of in the background. And he basically is saying everything that you look up to there, that whole system is coming down. OK, now they were concerned. Remember, the, the, the disciples are concerned because he just said something that was troubling. Your house is left desolate. They're like, huh? OK. The house is left desolate. That's everything to Israel. You're telling me that's coming down. OK. And, and he goes into this thing. OK, because, again, you have to let me not go too fast because you want to understand the context here. OK. The disciples are coming to him, and they're coming to him privately. Okay, look at look at look at verse number, um, look at verse number three. Now, as he as he sat on the mount of us, the disciples came to him privately. Okay, nobody else. And it says, and they said this. They said, "Tell us when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming?" and the end of the world. Now, again, we're talking about renewing our mind to the kingdom of God, okay? Again, just like I asked about Matthew 24 and 14, what was your understanding of this gospel of the kingdom should be preached to all the world, then the end will come. Now we have the same situation here. What in your view or what in your past teaching that you've received, what is this about? The disciples are asking question here. When shall these things be? When shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? And most of us, many of us, tend to kind of summarize the, 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 the series of questions, by the way, that the disciples are asking about the second coming or the end of the world. I mean, can you amen me on that if you agree that that's kind of what you thought is that, well, they're asking about the, the coming, you know, that's what they said here. The coming, yeah, exactly. And the end of the world. That's what it says here. It says, "What? when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? So we say, oh, then we, then we start reading all this stuff after this, and we start inserting, oh, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, this, that, other, you know. And then when we see that stuff on the news channels, we're like, yep, this is it. This is the end. We are, and I'm telling you, if I had a thousand dollars for every person that tells me we are in the end times, I would be a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire. Okay. These are the end times. Well, if you're going to renew your mind to the kingdom of God, you have to understand what's going on here. Okay. So Jesus is getting ready to address this thing. OK, and he's going to to start to talk about this. And we need to be careful in understanding exactly what's being said here. First, let's clean something up. This is not one question by the disciples. This is a series of three succinct questions. Now, remember the context of the text and the nature of what's happening here. The disciples have been with Jesus for years. They have heard him for a very, very long time now at this point. Talk about judgment that was coming upon apostate Israel. Okay? When something is, is apostate, it's, it's basically they've renounced or they've rejected God's purpose, what God wants we can say even God's original intent. They heard Jesus. We know this. I've taught, I've showed you this. They heard Jesus preach in the synagogue saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand or has arrived. They heard that. They heard Jesus say that there's some of you that are standing here who will not taste death until 
the son of man returns or comes back. They, they've heard that. And I'll get to that in a second. And they, un, again, they understood they were not confused. The disciples were not confused. What they're asking here is they want better, they want to, to understand some timings of the timing of some things. Okay. Okay. They, they understood the kingdom of God because that's all Jesus taught them. Again, we're talking about renewing your mind to the kingdom. This is why all you need to talk about is the kingdom, 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 and allow that kingdom understanding to push out religious understanding because there's no value in religious understanding or worldly understanding. You don't need to understand how things operate in the world. Understand how things operate in the kingdom of God. Then the way the world operates is just going to, you're just going to, that's just going to be obviously second to you. Okay. And again, we need to, because we, we, we're, we, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So if you want to go buy some bread at the store, you're going to have to bring some money with you. Okay. You're not going to go in there and say the kingdom tells me I could just take this. Maybe at some time in history, that may be the case, but that's not where we're at now. This is why Jesus said, go take the, the, ta- the, the coin out of the fish's mouth and pay my taxes in yours as well. So here in, in Matthew, when Jesus says, don't you see every stone's coming down? They came to him. They asked him this question. When shall these things be? That's the first question. When is this going to happen? What is going to be the signs of you coming into your kingdom? Because they already had this teaching. They already knew that he was coming into his kingdom. They're saying, how are we going to know that you have come into your kingdom? How are we going to know this, Jesus? When is this thing, this desolate thing happening? When is this, when is this, this whole system coming down? When? And then the third question is, what sh- what's going to be the signs of the end of the world, which is the word aeon, which means the age. So they understood specifically. We may not. I mean, I do, and I'm hoping you do after today. They understood that the end was the end of the age. They knew that Messiah had come. They knew that Messiah would sit on the throne of David and rule and reign forever. Okay? They knew that the veil of separation between God and man was coming down, was being ripped, okay, from top down. They knew that imminent judgment was coming upon Israel. Israel played the harlot. She became a whore, okay, spiritually. And God said, I'm done with you. Okay, I'm done with you. Yet I'm 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 judging it. And now they're saying, well, we need to know when all this stuff is happening because you're getting ready to go. We're gonna be here. We need to understand some things. So Jesus, you know, again is is going to go into that here. Now I I, I want you to to understand again that and matter of fact, let's let's go over here. How much time we got? Yeah, let's go over here to um really quick to Matthew chapter 13, and then we'll have to pick up a lot of this next week. But I want you to see this again, because you can't say with this scripture that, oh, this, this is happening today, coronavirus and, 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 and wars and rumors of wars and terrorism and, 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 and this, that, and the other, and uh, 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 earthquakes and tsunamis. Yeah, this is it. Economic collapse. You know, and then we have all these other things. No, no, they understood that all this stuff was talking about them. Okay. And in Matthew, go to Matthew chapter 13 and look at verse number 36. Okay. Matthew 13 and 36. It says, Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him. And they said, This is after the parable of the, 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 the tares of the field. And he, they said to us, explain to us the parable of the tares, okay? And Jesus Jesus answered in verse number 37, and he says, 
He that sows the good seed is the son of man. Now, who's the son of man? Jesus, okay? So he's saying, look, I'm giving you this parable. This is a kingdom parable. All the parables were about the kingdom of God, okay? He says, the, he that sows the good seed is the son of man, Jesus. The field, all right, remember the harvest, the field? The field is the world. Now, this is speaking of the cosmos, meaning the inhabited world, okay? Specifically of that time. The good seed, watch this now. This is good news right here. The good seed that would be the children of the kingdom of God. That would be at that time, 2,000 years ago, the first century believer. They are the good seed. Okay, remember, who's the one that sows the good seed? Jesus. The cosmos, the inhabited world, is the field. The good seeds are the children of the kingdom of God, the, the, the citizens of the kingdom. But again, you're talking about it at that time. But the tares... The tares are the children of the wicked one. Who were, man, I, I, pop quiz, right? Who were, the chi, who were the children of the, come on, come on. Somebody, I hope somebody's got this. Who were the children of the wicked one, the evil one? Who? Somebody tell me. Who? The demons that fell with him. Say leaders of Israel. Whoa, yes. The leaders of oh. Israel. Yes, <laughs> they were the children. Did not Jesus say, you are of your father, the devil? Yes. So the tares in the parable are the children of the wicked one, which represented apostate Israel. And it says, and the enemy, he goes on, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, or that word is aeon, aeon, A-I-O-N in the Greek, which means the end of the age. The harvest represented the end of the age. And the end of the age was the end of the Mosaic age. Okay, the, basically what you would refer to today as the Old Testament or the Old Covenant. That was coming into play. And it says, and Jesus said, and the reapers are the angels. Verse 40, as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. Fire represents what? Prophetically. Come on, some prophetic people. What does fire represent many times? Destruction. Destruction. Purification. Purification. It Purification. can represent that. How about this word? Judgment. Judgment. Yep, judgment. As therefore the tares, who are the tares? The children of the wicked one. Apostate Israel. Just as the tares are gathered and burned in fire or judgment, so shall it be at the end of this age. Not talking about the end of some world. Not talking about the end of the earth. Okay. Again, we're talking about renewing our mind to the kingdom of God. Verse 41, Jesus, it says, the son of man shall then send forth his angels. They should gather out of his kingdom everything that offends. And them, watch this now, come on, watch this word. And them that do iniquity, come on, Dixie, them that do iniquity. So Jesus is saying, look. It's going to be gathered out of the kingdom, all things that offend and all things which do iniquity. And remember this. Remember, fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, uh, effeminate, thieves, liars, drunkards, et cetera, et cetera. What does it say in Corinthians? They will not enter the kingdom of God. Okay? Verse 42. And they shall cast them into the furnace of fire where, they'll share, where there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now, what does that mean? They're going to be cast in a fire or a furnace. See, this is where you have to know history, you guys. It, historically, I don't know if you know this, but it, historically in 70 AD, Jerusalem was destroyed. Jerusalem, in the book of Josephus, a historian says that Jerusalem was set ablaze. 
Okay. I'm, I'm originally from Chicago. We have something called the great Chicago fire. The whole city, as it were, was ablaze. Jerusalem was set ablaze. Okay. Jesus goes on and says, then shall the righteous at that time shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who he, who has ears to hear, let him hear. So shall it be at the end of the age. So shall it be at the end of the age. Okay, aeon. The angels shall come forth and sever, cut the wicked from the just. There'll be a separation. I'm taking the righteous and the unrighteous are going to be cast into the fiery furnace where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, you think weeping and gnashing of teeth you have to understand that the weeping of gnashing teeth is kind of like, no, we thought we had it. But you're saying it's over here. That's where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because why? They would miss the time of the Lord's visitation. They would miss the kingdom of God. Why? Because they wanted to do it religiously. And I'm telling you, just like then, there's still people today that want to do it religiously. And I'm, I'm, I'm help, trying to help you here. Renew your mind to the kingdom of God. Religion is not your friend. Religion is your enemy. It is the enemy of God. And you can see it here 2,000 years ago, how God dealt with it. Okay? It says in verse number 50, they shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing, gnashing of, cheese, of teeth. And then Jesus, this is where I wanted to bring you to. In verse 51, look what Jesus says to his disciples 2,000 years ago, as he's talking about things pertaining to the kingdom of God and the end of the age, the Mosaic age, Jesus says to them, have you understood, have you understood all these things? So Jesus is saying to his disciples, do you understand what I just told you? Tell me right now, do you understand the words that I just spoke to you? And it says, and they said to him, Yes, Lord. So when we take that and we start going into Matthew 24, which many, many times referred to as the Olivet Discourse because it's on the Mount of Olives and he's talking about things pertaining to the kingdom of God and how there's going to be a shift away from this, this religious or I should say perverted religious, idolatrous, legalistic, demonic, wicked system to the kingdom of God, because that has been the, your father's intent from the beginning. God never intended to set up religious systems at all. So when we study this thing, we, we start Matthew 24 with the understanding, you guys, that the disciples who are asking these three questions, okay? When the, shall these things be? How, we, how will we know that you've come into your kingdom? And when will be the end of the age? When does it take place? When? How do we know it happened? Okay? They understood this thing. They understood exactly what Jesus was talking about. They said it themselves. He asked them. They said it themselves. They understood that these things that Jesus is going to explain in 24 was imminent to their generation. And now they just want to understand the signs. Why? So they know it was upon them. We're not to be, listen, we're not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. We're not to be, you know, uh, it's like my wife says, ignorance is not bliss. We're to know. Solomon said, in all you're getting, get understanding. Okay. So in the eyes of the disciples, it, all of this stuff is connecting. They understood, see, they understood the Old Testament. They understood Daniel. They understood all this stuff, going from the songs of, 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 of Moses found in Deuteronomy to, to Daniel's visions uh, of, of the end of the age. They under, to, to, to Malachi's uh, great and, the great and dreadful year or day of the Lord. They understood that. To, to John the Baptist, when he says the axe is laid at the root, what did that mean? We try to say, oh, that's here now. No, no, that was the kingdom being inaugurated and in coming into this world. And it's been here for 2,000 years. 
It's in you. It's in me. And we need to focus on and seek after that. So when we look at this, and again, I'm out of time today, but when we look at this more, it's going to clean up all of the yuck, all of the sludge from religious jargon and ideologies and, 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 and uh, just bad doctrine, okay? And then you'll say, oh, now I get a greater understanding of the kingdom because it's like everything. We filter stuff, right? And if you hear, you know, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world, then the end will come. Oh, yes, yeah, right. So I just got to get out there and do this because I want to get the heck out of here. This is a horrible world. I just need to go to heaven. You weren't made for heaven. You were made for the earth. Now, you, you're in heaven now in spiritual places, but you have an assignment. And this is what's kept us from our assignment. This is what's kept us from walking in dominion and authority. We all need this. I need this. We need to renew our mind because if not, we're going to be victimized. One thing's going to pop up. The stock market's going to go down. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's going to happen? Interest rates are going to go up. Oh, my goodness. Or some other type of thing. Or we're going to get a, a power surge in the eastern sea coast or seaboard is, is, is going to lose power. Oh, my God. A kingdom, kingdom minded understands no. I'm in control of my environment. Isn't that what I've been saying for weeks? Okay. Why don't we stop here? I know I gave you guys a lot. Okay. Um, verse 30. Verse, what do you got there? Verse 50 and 51. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, any questions? Any, any questions? Any? When will this be on YouTube? What, say it again, Tasha. When will this be on YouTube? <laughs> okay, I'll I'll, uh, I'll make the commitment to get it out there by Tuesday. Hopefully, I get it out there earlier. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Let's see here. Lewis just popped something up. The Jewish people of that time lost everything: temple system, priest, genealogy, culture, covenant. Over one million Jews of that time died. Absolutely horrible deaths. Yes. I mean, history. And again, you'll that comment right there, you'll see how I pick it up next week and it fits. OK, um, the, the whole system came down. Not one stone shall be left standing. Jewish people are now not the same people. And that's a good point, because in and, and listen, I know this challenges people. I know this challenges maybe things you've learned, ideologies and so on. But we need to shift and change, because, again, the goal is the kingdom. Many people today look at the nation of Israel as a biblical nation. And I'm going to tell you, the nation of Israel is not a biblical nation. The nation of Israel is a nation just like any other nation. Remember, God looks, okay, and we know this because of Revelation that there, there's no more sea. It talks about there's no more sea. Seas represent divide. There's no more, I mean, we have nations, don't get me wrong, okay, we're in the United States of America, um, and there's other nations, and, and they're unique to their world system. However, in the kingdom of God, God's not interested in a particular nation. God is about his kingdom. And there's no individual nations in the kingdom of God. It is one kingdom. In his kingdom, the Bible says, rules over all. Okay? The kingdoms of this world have come and are now the kingdom of, of our Lord and his Christ, who rules and reigns forever. So our understanding, again, I'm not knocking anything. I'm not saying anything bad, but we, we have a propensity to love one nation and hate another when our responsibility is to love all people of all races, of, of all uh, uh, nationalities. Okay. Yeah. There's evil people everywhere. Don't get me wrong. And, and, and we have to, there's many times where uh, wars do occur, but that's that's not our job. But, you know, and I'm not saying we shouldn't defend our country. I'm not going there. What I'm saying is that we have a tendency to say, oh, we need to focus so much over here, but that's not the kingdom of God, okay? That's what religion does. And then we create these movements and so on. And, you know, uh, Israel is a secular nation. It's just a secular nation. It's no different than any other nation, okay? Nations are secular. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be involved in helping them or we shouldn't preach the kingdom there. We should. And there's people there. We know people there. 
that are preaching the kingdom. And that's what they need. Just like Iran needs it or China needs it or whoever needs it. America needs it. Okay. All right. Okay, good. So anything else? Again, I know it's probably, you know, challenging you. I get it. I'd like to say something. Go ahead, Lewis. I just really appreciate, this is great. I I mean, this is just awesome. I'm just, man, I just, man, the Holy Spirit in me is just jumping, I guess. I don't know. You know, I just, this is what it's about. And I I just want to say, you know, I appreciate you, this message and talking about this because this is a hard thing to learn sometimes. But let me tell you something. When I got the revelation of what we're talking about now, it gave me so much freedom, and it put me in my own let's see timeline, and it took away so much fear. I heard a story yesterday. You know, there's a story, there's a, a scripture. I'll just paraphrase, but it's the one where Jesus is saying, you know, uh, be careful not to have children a certain time of the year. And, yeah. And I heard a story yesterday, like we never have kids. We never had kids. We've always wanted to have kids, but because of that scripture, we we're always terrified yeah. of not to have children. And that's what religion does. It, wow. it, 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 yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. But I just want to say, just let this soak in. I think it took me about a good year and a half because <laughs> I had to end up breaking old stuff off. Mm-hmm. And I really liked what you said at the beginning. You said uh, something about, I have it written down here. I try to write as fast as you speak because I try to practice all of these things, not just hear it, but I but I try to practice them in my life throughout the rest of the week. And so you said we uh, we have to put down things of the world or religion to receive the kingdom. So this is a great example. We have to break away. If, if anybody out there was like me, I had to break away these these the strongholds in my mind, you know, you had me read a scripture and you had me, you know, what did that mean to you? And I said, Oh, you know, when, when I, when you would hear something like that, it would always make me f- have the fearful because the end of time was coming or the end of the world and these nuclear bombs and everything's going to go crazy. And so I had to break that away. And when I broke stuff like that away and got revelation and as the light came in, then the kingdom came in. So it takes time. It's not going to happen in two days or three weeks. It's just, just keep chewing on it, keep chewing on it. But I really appreciate this. this is great, and this is awesome. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Thanks for that. And, yeah, I mean, it's going to take time. And, listen, uh, you know, I'm certain that a lot of you have questions, and that's okay. You should have questions. Remember, in the places that you were, you were probably not able to ask questions. You were probably told to just take it and believe it and shut up. You can ask any question you want here. Okay, and if I don't have the answer, I'll go find out the answer for you, or I'll help you find out the answer. But ask the questions because in all you're getting, get understanding. 